Welcome again to another episode of D&D 20. Let's get it started. So, we meet our adventures on the road. Uh, they left uh, Mirren's Luck. And they cross into the plains of the Redlands. It's primarily fa flat with rolling hills. And our GM told us it was, think Rohan. At night, the party sees a glow in the distance. Not where the sun should be when it's setting. Jerem confirms that in that direction lies a city named Harvind. Sai and Tyleaf rush ahead and find a city on fire. The city is under attack by an orc raiding party. And as the rest of the party catch up with the caravan, they are met by a young boy, no more than 16. Sai's approach, Lord Amras? To think I would find you in such a place, the boy says. Sai gives a heated glare, signaling not here. Though the party is too distracted to pay close enough attention to this. After the fighting happens and they drive the orcs out, they are welcomed into the city. Uh, and Sai has an oddly familiar conversation with somebody that you supposedly had just met. He goes by the name of Mokat Daku, and he's a pretty young sorcerer. They stay the night in Harven and head out in the morning. The party makes it up to Brenziri the next day. It's a vast, towering mountain with a winding road all the way to the top. And at the very top of this mountain lies Brenziri. Uh, fortified walls sloped up. It takes about a good solid four hours to climb up the spiraling road that is carved into the mountain. When they reach the city, Sai disappears as the party resupplies and Jerem heads to the trade district. Lorevere and the rest of the, the gang, Dodo, Ty Leaf, now Mokot, head towards in uh, the city, uh, the trade district, in search for a wizard. Um, they have questions about this bow. Well, Lorvir has questions about this bow. They find Sandoval after uh, questioning around, and he is praised to be Brenziri's finest and most powerful wizard. He lives in a very tall tower, which you can just imagine he just built uh, with magic. As they, they knock and are entered in, uh, High Elf greets them, and Sandoval. When they ask, when Lorevere presents this bow, he, he seems intrigued. After some inspection, and, and with a bow, he, he shows interest great interest. He claims that the bow is a sentient bow, having a will of its own, and goes by the name of Ankarak. It was forged to protect elven kind. Whatever that may mean. Meanwhile, after this, Sai meets up with the rest of the party in the trade district and finds Jerem. Sai asks what it would take to take to be have an audience with the king and Jerem agrees to help he knows contacts in the city and he's a very well-known merchant just at that moment a few city guards drunk off their asses approach us the leader asks for papers spewing insults and remarks on half-breeds and gnomes and dwarves Sai takes offense to this and grasps his swords, almost about to fight him, basically, which probably would not be a great idea. Just then, though, the captain of the guard comes with his entourage, asks what's going on, and basically dismisses the the troublemakers. He introduces himself as 
Sir Edmund, captain of the Royal Guard. Uh, he notices us as the party that was talked about in Harven, who helped defend the city and take care of all the wounded. He then invites us, saying that the king would like to meet us and sets an appointment for the next day to see the king. Pretty convenient. That night though, our party has a dream. All of us, the same dream. You're in a town and it's on fire. A dark figure with white eyes bears down on you. As you quickly duck into a building, you find yourself in a throne room with a king, human, sitting there. He points at you and you notice that all the guards in that room are orcs. All of a sudden everything disappears and a woman bathed in light appears in front of you. As she comes near you see that she holds a hot brand. When she reaches up to you she brands your hand. You wake up in searing pain and as almost as quickly as that pain happens, it's gone. The party hears Lorivere scream in her room and Dodo, Ty Leaf and Sai rush in. Mokat groggily walks in, not really knowing what, what's happened. And Sai looks down at his hands and notices the mark of an eye on his left hand. Everybody looks down and sees that they too have that brand. 